Hey, welcome back. So far, we've talked about the concept of vectors, their uses a little bit in context in physics and other sciences. We've talked about scalar multiplication and addition and subtraction. What we're going to talk about in this video is a way of multiplying in a way two vectors. One of the techniques is what we call the dot product. And it's important to say is that actually this isn't the only way of multiplying two vectors together. There is a cross product that we're not going to talk about right now. So this is one of the ways of you can thinking of multiplying two vectors. And so the dot product is pretty straightforward. If you have two vectors that are described in this way, so AI plus BJ in both cases, just denoting the A1 and B1 for vector V and for vector U, we have the A2 and B2. If you want to multiply with the dot product V and U, well, all you do is you multiply the A components together and the B components together. Importantly, when we do this, the result is not another vector. That's important to say for when we add and subtract vectors, the result is another vector of the interaction between those two. This, this method of dot product is not a vector. It results in a number. So importantly, so the result is a real number. Uh, and importantly, what we say in terms of vectors, we call this a scalar. Before I talk a little bit more about other properties of the dot product, let's just do a quick example to ground ourselves. If we have two vectors here, the u vector is 5i plus 6j, the w vector is 7i minus 2j. If we're being asked to find the dot product between these two, all we're going to do is to multiply, again, these components together in their appropriate places. So u dot w would equal five times seven, plus six times negative two. Really the only tricky part here is this negative two. Importantly, in this definition, we're thinking about only addition between these terms. So if you have a negative here, we think about this as adding negative two J. Um, but once we do that, this is 35 minus 12, which is 23. And again, to emphasize the result, as we expected, is a real number. It's not a vector, though you'll see very soon when we talk about projections, is how we use this to create important vectors in the relationship between two different vectors. So next up, I just want to list a few important characteristics of the dot product. Importantly here, given this form right here, if we took a vector and we created the dot product with itself, which we're completely allowed to do, what we would get, given this definition right here, would be a1 squared plus b1 squared. And if we look at this, this is very similar to when we find the magnitude of, of a vector, except for we would have a square root. So actually, if we take a vector and find the dot product with itself, what we find is the magnitude of that vector squared. And then actually using that fact and the law of cosines, what we can actually determine is in a way an alter alternative definition of the dot product. If we apply the law of cosines, and I won't show this proof, but it's on the internet or any textbooks you wanna look through have this. If we take two functions or two vectors, excuse me, and we find the dot product, another way of evaluating that dot product is to multiply the magnitude of those two vectors times the cosine of the smallest angle between those two vectors. And again, I haven't justified that, but it's this first statement right here, along with the law of cosines that proves this right here. But this actually gives us a really important intuition about the use of the dot product. If we take this right here and we solve this for cosine, again, cosine of this theta, this theta being the smallest angle between these, but if we solve this for cosine, what we would get is the cosine of the smallest angle between these two would be the dot product, so u dot v divided by their magnitudes. The importance of this statement might not seem obvious right away, but one important thing about this is thinking when is this zero? So in this case, this cosine will be zero if the dot product is also zero, because zero divided by anything, no matter what the magnitudes is, are zero. So importantly, we would say the cosine is zero if the dot product is zero, but what does it mean for the cosine to be zero? And importantly, what we know is that if theta 
is a 90 degree angle or pi over two. So this 90 degree angle right there, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So what this statement means, it means is that the two vectors meet at a right angle By the way, just to offer some vocabulary here, importantly, we call this, they, we say the vectors are orthogonal. If and only if the dot product is equal to zero. So to review these statements real fast is that if we take a vector and find the dot product with itself, what we get is the square of its magnitude. That will be important in the future. And secondly, an alternative definition of the dot product. If we take the dot product and we apply the law of cosines, we get this form right here, that the dot product is found, can be found by multiplying the magnitudes of those two vectors and multiplying by the cosine of the smallest angle between those two vectors. The corollary of that is this statement right here, which we can use, by the way, to find the angle between the two vectors with the dot product and the magnitude. So that's an important statement also. But more importantly is the fact that given this statement, the only time that cosine of an angle is going to be zero is if this dot product is zero. And the cosine of an angle is only zero if those two vectors meet at a 90 degree angle that, or in other words, are orthogonal. So thus, we can know if they meet at a 90 degree angle by simply taking the dot product and finding if it's equal to zero.